Hello. We're looking today at the real Anthony Fauci, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s book. Kennedy's book is the mother of all exposés against the, quote, medical cartel, as he calls them. This volume shows how the largest pharmaceutical companies, we call it Big Pharma, have become primary agents in the 2020s historic coup d'etat against Western democracy, unquote. That's the words, again, of Robert F. Kennedy, Jr. Now, coup d'etat is a French phrase meaning the seizure and removal of a government and its powers. Now, we're not merely beset by pharma. Most in the political tribes are complicit along with the multi-letter agencies. We are miles downstream from that, that fabled time when, in some measure, an independent media guarded our civilization against itself. Now look out your window and see, though, it's as though the whole world is taken captive and riding aboard a speeding train and headed toward a technocratic rainbow destination that they're doomed to learn ultimately is just a big mirage. Trust misplaced can have devastating effects, and that's one reason why we need to look at sometimes books like this. When we trust the wrong agencies, the wrong people, it can lead to desperate atrocities in our world, spiritual danger and physical death. Having a realistic view about how much trust we can safely place in these institutions is, is actually pretty important. Now, anyone could turn literally anywhere in this remarkable volume and, and find any 20-page stretch in this book and gather substantial, well-documented knowledge. This book includes more than 2,200 references, m many of them, most of them are web links. You can look it up yourself and read it yourself. And so yes, Anthony Fauci is a central figure. His problematic history is a jumping off point really for Kennedy's sweeping critique of the global medical cartel. Kennedy writes this, quote, from the moment of my reluctant entrance into the vaccine debate in 2005, I was astonished to realize that the pervasive web of deep financial entanglements between pharma and the government's health agencies had put regulatory capture on steroids. The CDC, for example, owns 57 vaccine patents and spends $4.9 billion of its $12 billion annual budget as of 2019 buying and distributing vaccines. NIH owns hundreds of vaccine patents and often profits from the sale of products it supposedly regulates. High-level officials, including Dr. Fauci, receive yearly emoluments of up to $150,000 in royalty payments on products that they help develop and then usher through the approval process. Does this sound right to you? The FDA receives 45% of its budget through what are euphemistically called user fees. When I learned that extraordinary fact, the disastrous health of the American people was no longer a mystery, unquote, says Robert F. Kennedy Jr. But Kennedy goes on to say this, quote, During the COVID pandemic, Dr. Fauci served as the ringmaster to the engineered demolition of America's economy. His lockdown predictably shattered the nation's once booming economic engine, putting 58 million Americans out of work and permanently bankrupting small businesses, including 41% of black-owned businesses, some of which took generations of investment to build, unquote. Now, everything I've shared so far is just in the first few pages. I mean, this has been the front matter before page one. This book has 12 chapters, and each of those chapters opens a window onto a larger story of the abuse of power, much of it surrounding Anthony Fauci. And there are detailed discussions of controversial medicines I won't hear names so as not to waken the censorship troll. Now, as for the advent of COVID-19, how did this train start rolling? Let me quote again from the book directly. Quote, at the outset of the pandemic, Dr. Fauci used wildly inaccurate modeling that overestimated U.S. deaths by 525%. Scammer and pandemic fabricator Neil Ferguson of the Imperial College in London was their author with funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation of $148.8 million. Dr. Fauci used this model as justification for his lockdowns. Dr. Fauci acquiesced to the CDC's selective protocol changes for completing death certificates in a way that inflated the claimed deaths from COVID and thus inflated its infection mortality rate. CDC later admitted that only 6% of COVID deaths occurred in entirely healthy individuals. The remaining 94% suffered from an average of 3.8 potentially fatal comorbidities. Federal officials relied on vagueness and deception to recklessly overestimate the dangers from COVID in, in every age group. 
All of these deceptions riddled virtually every mainstream media report, particularly those by CNN and the New York Times, leaving the public with a vastly inflated and cataclysmically inaccurate impression of its lethality. Unquote. One doctor tells his story, quote, this is what he says, early treatment was the key. We weren't allowed to talk about it. The whole medical establishment was trying to shut down early treatment and silence all the doctors who talked about successes. A whole generation of doctors just stopped practicing medicine. When we talked about it, the whole cartel came for us, unquote. So now Kennedy documents how a certain drug, which suddenly became politically incorrect, was suddenly being purchased in Africa by groups of buyers and then burned in bonfires outside of African cities. In March, at the Department of Health and Human Services request, several large pharmaceutical companies, Novartis, Bayer, Sanofi, and others, donated their inventory, a total of 63 million doses of a certain drug and 2 million more doses of another certain drug, to the strategic national stockpile managed by BARDA, which is an agency under the DHHS. Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, BARDA's director, Dr. Rick Bright, later claimed that, that these drugs were deadly and that he needed to protect the American public from them. Now, that chapter goes on for almost 100 pages, this first chapter, discussing additional drugs which, if named here, might annoy the censorship trolls. I'm going to skip over the next 10 chapters here, outlining Fauci's behavior in the HIV AIDS years, and which easily and sadly predicts his behavior these past two years. Kennedy documents the corruption of the government health apparatus and its literal capture by Bill Gates' financial influence. Supposedly wealthy philanthropists are doing enormous good on a global scale, but Kennedy shows how millions of mothers and their infants' lives have been harmed by the intentional dumping of unsafe vaccines in poor nations outside of North America. But I want to focus the last portion of my reaction to this book on one chapter, this last chapter in Kennedy's book, Possibly You've Heard of Event 201. It was held just a few weeks before the debut of COVID. 201 was only the last in a sequence of tabletop exercises gamed out over the past 20 years. By now, presumably, you've heard of at least some of these. Some of these took place over just a couple of days in a single city. Others involved thousands of participants from local, state, and federal governments, military, intelligence, medical leaders, uh, private industry. Robert F. Kennedy writes this, quote, These scenarios which health officials and spooks conceived of and gamed back in 2005 became our collective reality in 2020 and 2021. Kennedy says this, quote, Virtually all of the scenario planning for pandemics employ technical assumptions and strategies familiar to anyone who has read the CIA's notorious psychological warfare manuals for shattering indigenous societies, obliterating traditional economics and social bonds, for using imposed isolation and the demolition of traditional economies to crush resistance, to foster chaos, demoralization, dependence, and fear, and for imposing centralized and autocratic governments." Unquote. Friends, some people have a fanciful view of government and military leaders, that they're heroic persons of virtue who never would unnecessarily put lives at risk. But when it comes to these pandemic exercises, quote, with each new simulation, the staccato repetition of the message by trusted experts, doctors in lab coats, and authoritative collectives like Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, Senator Sam Nunn, World Health Director General Gro Harlem Brundtland, and Senator Tom Daschle, reinforce the lesson that censorship, isolation, the militarization of medicine, totalitarian controls, and coercive vaccine mandates are the only appropriate response to pandemics. Scenario planning, in other words, is a potent brainwashing technique for creating and fortifying anti-democratic orthodoxies among key political leaders, the press, and, and the technocracy, and preparing the nation to tolerate a coup d'etat against its constitution without resistance, unquote. Johns Hopkins was often a participant in the simulations, and Kennedy's reaction to what they did is somber. Again, quote, None of the Hopkins simulations contemplate the efficiency of repurposed medications to mitigate or end the pandemic, 
and none of them allow for soul-searching about the abolition of the constitutional rights and the wholesale destruction of America's political and judicial systems in favor of a tyrannical medical and military junta. None of them recognize that there is no pandemic exception in the United States Constitution. Instead, they were too busy wargaming a high-level mutiny against American democracy." Unquote. Now, August 2019 saw a four-day-long, quote, functional exercise, unquote, named Crimson Contagion. I don't know if you've heard of Crimson Contagion. The participants just happened to be the same leaders who, in a few months' time, would be managing the actual COVID-19 outbreak that we just lived through these past 24 months. Now, Crimson Contagion had a participation in more than 100 locations across the United States. This meeting was pretty much kept secret until a Freedom of Information request was submitted and had to be complied with. And so at that point, the New York Times reported on the story. But it's Kennedy. It's Kennedy who points out the most substantial point. Quote, The New York Times takeaway missed the altogether larger and more significant stories that the Crimson Contagion planners precisely predicted virtually every element of the COVID-19 pandemic, from the shortage of masks to specific death numbers, months before COVID-19 was ever identified as a threat, and that their overarching countermeasure was the pre-planned demolition of the American Constitution by a scrupulously choreographed palace coup. Quote, these are brainwashing exercises, says former CAA officer and whistleblower Kevin Shipp, getting all these thousands of public health and law enforcement officials to participate in blowing up the United States Bill of Rights in these exercises. You basically have obtained their prior sign-off on torpedoing the Constitution to overthrow it's democracy. They know that none of these participants are going to suddenly start soul-searching when the real thing happens, unquote. As we want to tie this off, what do we say? Well, the picture that emerges from Kennedy's volume is not merely Mordor on the Potomac, but it's this picture of the spooks and their alphabet soup agencies allied with Silicon Valley elites who are dismantling and replacing liberty and representative democracy with their own technocracy and painting onto it a new racing stripes of their own design. This has consequences for our eschatological understanding of end-time events. A government isn't its machinery as much as the people running its machinery are that government. Conceptions of personal and group rights can change dramatically in one generation. Expectations from our childhood may be long outdated. My personal belief is that in the 2020s, American representative democracy is convenient for marketing, but that things work differently behind the curtains than we would like to think. A wealthy technocratic elite are using the powers of media, state, and technology to redraw culture in their own image. The state is not a principled and incorruptible arbiter of religious liberty, but itself is a powerful political force actively shaping viewpoints. Revelation 13.11 says that while this power in Bible prophecy has two horns like a lamb, that in the end, it enacts its will through a dragonic coercive power. Robert F. Kennedy's book is a messenger to open our eyes to the dark days already upon us and to help us realize that our fanciful conceptions of religious liberty need updating. The real Anthony Fauci is one of the most remarkable reads of our lifetime. And it is especially important for expositors who want to check their theories against the current chilling facts. Read it.